Hi, Tim Crosby here. Well, today's topic got started the other day at uh, one of my colleagues at the music store. I heard this clickety-clack sound coming and out from out there, and I was in my teaching studio, and I had a few minutes. I walked out to see what was going on, and she had a pair of castanets in her hands and was trying to figure out how to be like a flamenco dancer and go clickety-clack with the castanets, which got me thinking about a lot of dance music in a lot of different cultures has a rhythm instrument that makes the clickety-clack sound. You've got the castanets in that Spanish music, that flamenco music. You've got spoons and a lot of jug band stuff. And my preferred clickety-clack rhythm instrument are the bones. Now, the bones are obviously one of the oldest instruments because they started out as the rib bones that are left over after you have a barbecue. These are made out of wood, so the dog won't eat them. But uh, these are the bones. Now I'm going to give you a workshop here on how to play the bones. Here's the thing. Castanets are really obvious how they make their sound. They, they've got this little clamshell. You put your fingers together and they go click, 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 click. Spoons, you hold them back to back and you hit them against your hand. I can't even get this to do that. Hit them against your hand or against your thigh. And it's really obvious that hitting them makes them clack. The bones, on the other hand, are magic. It's not obvious what makes them make their noise. Here's how it works. So, they're curved, shaped like bones. First one, you hold in between your middle finger and your ring finger. And then you take your ring finger and wrap it around on the edge, and got it on the edge of the bone. So now you're holding it by pulling your finger back this way, holding it right there in the crotch between your ring finger and your middle finger. And so that's gonna be kind of your anvil bone. That's the one that stays fairly still. The other bone, there are two ways to do it traditionally. The most common way is to put this one between your middle finger and your index finger, and then hold it with your middle finger because the bones that I make are longer than a lot of, of common, commonly sold bones. They're longer and they work better for me. If I hold it between my thumb and index finger and then take both my index finger and my middle finger to the edge, my thumb goes up parallel to it. And so there you go. And you hold them in such a way, fairly firmly, again, Back here, the, this bone goes against the um, heel of your index finger. This one goes, you pull it back with that finger into the crotch between your middle finger and your ring finger. And then, so here's what you're going to be tempted to do, is you're going to try to move your hand like that and make them click. That's not how they work. I mean, you can make a sound that way, but you can't get that clickety-clack, clickety-clack, clickety-clack. This is where the magic happens. So you hold your bones like that, a little bit of space, maybe a narrow finger width between them, and just hold them there kind of medium firmly. Tilt your arm up, so your forearm's more or less straight up and down, and turn. we're gonna start turning the palm out so it faces away from you so you can see the tops of the bones. Now this is what you think about. You think about the tops of the bones making an arc. Just, so it's like a, like a windshield wiper. Notice my elbow swings as a counterweight, kind of pivots right there. And so these go this way, elbow goes that way, and you just go back and forth. So spend some time just going back and forth. Don't worry about making a sound right now, okay? There's also, oop, made a sound. There's also a little bit of a twist that happens because your wrist is gonna be limber. So at the ends of the arc, when it changes direction, your wrist kind of swivels, pops a little bit. But now you're already starting to hear a little bit of it. So arc with the tops, windshield wiper, back and forth. And you can hear it starting to happen. You do it a little bit more vigorously, a little bit more of a twist in your wrist. Here's what's going to happen to you. As soon as you do that, you're going to start out and how come they don't make any sound? He said they would make sound if I did that. And then you get more vigorous and more vigorous and all of a sudden they'll start to 
clickety clack, clickety clack. And you're gonna, whoa, okay, now I got it. And then your mind is gonna go to this part of the bones that makes the noise, this down here. And you're gonna forget about paying attention just to the arc and ignoring it. This is where it gets all kind of zen and stuff. It's, it's, you make the motion, and if you do the motion correctly, the bones will click and clack themselves. But as soon as you try to control it, really, uh, you know, consciously control that until your hand knows the feel of it, they'll stop doing it. So you think about the tops, it'll go clickety clack. You think about the middles, it tends to, tend to stop. But that's it. That's the whole magic of it. So think about that arc that the tops make. Think about swinging your elbow, twisting your wrist, and then just do it vigorously. Now you're gonna see what happens is once you get going, then you can turn your hand more in, so it's coming more in and out. That's a whole lot more comfortable, less stress on your shoulder. But, and I'm out of practice, but I'm gonna get back in practice. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to get back in practice and talk about one of my favorite things, which is the bones. I'm Tim Crosby. I'm glad you're here. Um, visit the websites. You'll find them, as they say, down there someplace. So, see you next time.